Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be returning with another lower tier guide. This time featuring the New York, the American T5 battleship. Now, much like most of the line, pretty much all the way until you reach uh, tier 8, the German or sorry, the American battleships are very much slow but quite well armored and in general supposed to be played like brawlers. They usually have an edge over their um, Japanese counterparts, uh, usually in terms of turn speed, in terms of armor, in terms of anti-air, sometimes even in terms of healing. For example, the Colorado heals itself exceptionally well compared to pretty much any other ship, which is of course why it has so much, so much less HP than for example the Nagata. So, what you need to do when you start playing these ships, it starts at the Wyoming and you kind of have to learn it, or actually it probably even starts at the South Carolina, when you get these extremely slow moving battleships and you kind of struggle on how to actually make them work. Well the first thing you always need to do is you need to keep an eye on your minimap. You need to find yourself a spot where you can constantly um, keep yourself in battle and never let yourself get pushed out of the battle or accidentally sail away from the battle while, while chasing a single target. Because while, as you can see, um, it has a good amount of firepower, and especially with the increased range that you get, I think it's a T5, so you can slot increased range to get this meaty range on it, you can easily pick on cruisers from just about any range. You shoot 10 heavy shells, which pretty much, you can two or three shot most cruisers, at uh, your, the same tier, and you can even one-shot higher tier cruisers. I've one-shot Pensacolas, I've one-shot Shores, um, Molotovs, all of these. They can't stand up to your shells if they give you broadside. Now someone trying to drop me, so of course if you get dropped by a carrier, you take it as a focus target, target by control clicking it, and you turn into the torpedoes. Uh, I ate one torp, not a big deal. I turned into them, of course, to minimize, uh, the, dam minimize the amount of hits I take, and in the best case, um, bump into the torpedoes before they have time to activate. As you saw, one of the torpedoes never had time to activate, so it just became a dud, basically. Anyway, as I was saying, what you want to focus on when you're sailing this kind of ship is that you always want to keep yourself in a central position regarding the enemy ships and, of course, your own ships. You don't want to be on the outskirts or being pushed around uh, all alone somewhere where you become a very easy target for DDs or very easy targets for uh, uh, carriers and such. But more important than that is staying central to the enemy because these ships are very, very slow. If you find yourself fighting a single person and you push yourself uh, to the edge of the map while doing it, but when he dies, you suddenly realize that you're absolutely miles away from the closest enemy and it's going to take you ages to get back to the fight. So try to always keep yourself in a position where you can shoot at multiple targets and try to always plan for the future uh, regarding where you want to go. In this case, I'm moving towards the middle because first of all, there's two cruisers in the middle and cruisers are something you just straight up shit on in American uh, battleships. It's so easy for you to dominate uh, to dominate cruisers. They are they are so squishily armored. They can in no way stand up to your firepower. And uh, honestly, with your maneuverability, you shouldn't have any issues dodging any po uh, possible torps. You just have to make sure that you well turn. Pretty much it. I know this Omaha is gonna. You, I look at the minimap. I see him turning. You can see him turning hard left. That means he's torping. So I'm of course turning hard left myself. So yeah, that's his torps, I drop my speed, and with my maneuverability, absolutely no issues dodging these torps. And this is something, this shouldn't really be an issue for you in an, in an American battleship, because the turning circle is very, very tight on this. Uh, the rudder shift is of course not that quick, because well, you're a battleship, but thanks to the low speed and in general the very tight turning circles, you shouldn't have too many issues dodging the majority of torpedoes. Uh, this Omaha, which is of course same tier cruiser, had absolutely no chance. But you still have weaknesses, of course. You shouldn't give broadside. Key example here is New York. The, giving broadside is, of course, a fundamental issue uh, on every single ship in this game. But New York especially does not have that strong of a side armor. So if you give broadside like this guy does here, which is the same ship as I am, fully upgraded just as I am, 
And he hits a shit ton of damage. That's a citadel, of course, I aimed right at the waterline. And I tried to hit him in the central part of the ship, where the citadel is usually located. And I was 20k volley on basically my own ship. So, giving that sort of broadside is never, ever advisable. It's just gonna get you killed. And he doesn't have much of an option here. And of course, if you get very, very close to the targets, then you start being able to um, overpen, or I mean, able to deal with his armor even if he's angled. Now, if you face higher tier, if you end up in higher tier matchmaking, aka you face against T6s, T7s, then you obviously don't want to be going straight into brawling range against enemy battleships because they have the advantage in penetration because they have bigger guns. So going into brawling battles against higher tiers is usually not advisable. You want to keep your more of a range. Um, in same tier ship games, I don't have any issues with pushing up and taking the battle to the enemy. But if you face up against higher tiers, you generally want to keep more of a distance and just go for pot shots all the time. Uh, you, especially the cruisers. The cruisers are always going to be weak uh, to battleships. And as I said, Pensacola, Shores, Molotov, Eoba, Mayoko, all of these. You can sit at them, all of them with ease. And you can do it from insane ranges as well. You have 10 guns. You should make sure you make use of them. Is this Kenningsburg? Hiding behind the island. But you can see how I'm, I'm in a position where I can either shoot all these targets down south or all the targets up north if I want. And I'm angled towards the guys north, so they can't really shoot well at me. So this allows me to... I'm constantly keeping myself in a position where I'm able to shoot at anything possible. And that's the biggest issue with these uh, sniping type of battleships is that uh, they kill the one guy they can reach and then they can't shoot at anything. They have to move forward until they can shoot again. And even when they can shoot, their accuracy is questionable and so forth. So never... You don't really... First of all, you don't want to be sniping in a battleship. And second of all, you really don't want to be doing it in an American battleship. Now, uh, most cruisers, you can straight up pin regardless of the angle. You just got to make sure you hit the citadel. But uh, in general, it doesn't matter what angle. That could have just have been uh, well been a T7 cruiser. Um, if they get in to any sort of close range, especially, uh, you can just straight up delete them. So the battleship is a bully. It straight up is a bully, regardless of what tier it's facing. It's uh, not until when you really, really tanky ships like the Mayoko, who can probably frontal tank you pretty well, but even he will struggle if you land those good shells on him. And this is a Wyoming, which is also a fairly strong ship. You don't play it that long though, so I didn't bother making a commentary on it. But yeah, th this is kind of the difference. If that had been a T7 battleship, a Colorado, you, I would probably have aimed higher, simply to go for more superstructure hits. In general, if you fight angled higher tier battleships, you want to aim slightly higher because uh, their belt armor will most likely be bouncing your shells, but their superstructure is going to be just as squishy as on pretty much any other battleship. So, usually aim a bit higher, especially if you're facing German battleships, even if they give full broadside, you kind of want to aim a bit higher than the belt armor, just to get more damage out of them, because you can get those penetrations that hit kind of the deck armor-ish. Bogue. I'm gonna take a few shots at him. I'm not too tempted to go hunting him, though, entirely, because, uh, as I said earlier, you don't want to... You don't really want to chase ships. You often see, this is a pretty common mistake you see, you see battleships push through the caps and go hunting the carrier. At these lower tiers when they can't move, it's not that big of an issue, but uh, when they start to get some movement speed and you see, a, you see a Colorado, which is like the slowest thing ever, and you see it chasing around a Harrier or something, and you see him m remove himself completely from the battle just to chase that one carrier, uh, because he's so greedy for that one kill, and before he notices, he's completely out of the battle and has completely sewn himself useless. At this point, I just stopped chasing him because at this, if I kept sailing this way, kept shooting at him, I would be removing myself so, so far away from the battle, from the rest of the ships. Uh, I would be zoning myself out for no other reason than because I was greedy for a kill. And that, that of course, is a fundamental mistake. And it's a mistake you see people do very, very often. It's, in fact, probably the single most common battleship mistake I see. And it's just not limited to battleships either. You see cruisers doing it, you see DDs doing it. DDs who could be capping points, uh, scouting for their team, killing enemy DDs, contesting, all of this stuff, smoking up, 
They could be doing all these useful things and they're completely removing themselves from the battle to go chase the enemy carrier. And even when they kill the carrier, it's not necessarily even worth it. Is it gonna drop me? Okay, looks like this guy has put an auto command on this guy to drop me. So what I do here is I go very, very close to land. You saw I started turning in towards this landmass even as soon as I saw this uh, squad coming towards me because I suspected that the carrier had given him a last command to drop me before he died. If you see that happen, just go for the nearest landmass you can, especially if it's from the way the planes are coming, uh, because the auto drop doesn't distinguish between air and land, it just drops wherever it, ever it possibly can drop. So if you're putting a landmass right underneath him, well, the AI doesn't care, it can't distinguish. So just like you saw that squad did, he dropped the majority of his torps right inside the island and they did nothing. Only one torp actually made it through. So that's a good little trick if you see if you see a squad coming towards you from a carrier you just killed. Of course it only works against torpedo bombers. Normal bombers are just going to drop on you as normal. Now you see, for example, the Wyoming up north behind me, he was so eager to go for that carrier kill and so eager to like constantly keep shooting, keep his full broadside on them, that he has zoned himself completely out of the battle. He has no one to shoot at. He has, uh, he's not within range of anything, and because he's a slow American battleship, it's gonna take him ages to get anywhere. In fact, I'll be surprised if he gets off a single shot before this game ends, because he has effectively zoned himself out by limiting himself to one part of the map. Whereas uh, my position has always been the very, very central to the map. You see the white circle, which is my gun range? You can see how I'm practically covering the entire map in my gun range. Okay, torpedo boat. So obviously, if, he, if you spot him at this range and you see him turning, it's obvious he's probably launching his torps now. So I turn broadside to get as many guns on him as possible, and then I turn into him. You always want to turn into the torpedoes. Turning out towards the left probably forces you to catch more torpedoes than you need, whereas turning in will usually allow you to dodge the torps before they reach you, and of course, allow you to close distance to your enemy and deal more damage to him. Now, it would have been a different situation if he would have kept coming straight at me. If he had never turned away, uh, if he had kept coming straight at me, then I would have turned out, because then it, then it would have obviously been a YOLO rush, meaning he's rushing me with the plan of launching point-blank torps to kill me. Then I would have turned out and kept turning away and basically kiting him. That's the best way to deal with rushing DDs, is to kite them and kill them. But if you see the enemy DD turn away, then turn into them, because that's an obvious sign that one, they have launched torps, and two, they're trying to escape afterwards. And those torps aren't his, which means the other DD is always he also here, so I turn into the smoke and sail straight towards him. And I change my course every now and then. And here I'm going to show you a quick little trick. You see, he, my Yogi, I can't see him. What I do here is I press the map key twice, that's the M by default, I tap it twice. When you go into the map vision, it zooms out into like this overhead uh, vision. And I, by tapping it twice, you quickly get an eagle-eyes perspective of where the ships are. And using that trick, I was able to guesstimate his uh, position and where he was going, and I was able to land shells that I otherwise would have probably struggled landing. So that's a useful little trick if you see people hiding behind landmasses. Just quick tap of them to get that eagle eye vision or get that heightened vision to be able to take shots at them. Now it appears... Well, the Mayoga is in our base, so he's zoned himself out being fairly useless. I'm obviously pushing for the cap again, the ob objective, and trying to fight anything on my way to the objective. But it looks like the aim is going to end. Sadly, I won't get my croc in here because this guy managed to escape. And let's see the score. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Uh, this was during the bonus. I think I played this game during the bonus weekend, so that's why I got some bonus XP. But you can see the basic base XP is still very, very strong because I was such a central part of the battle the entire time. I've been, I was never really out of position in this game, except for slightly chasing the bogue. But even then, I realized quickly that I had to abandon that to keep myself in the battle. Anyway, let's move on to the build part of the commentary. Right, as usual I will start with the modules. Now, starting with the hull module, you can see just how many advantages it, it gives you. It gives you AA, it gives you a significant amount of rudder shift, it improves your main guns, and it gives you a nice, very nice chunk of HP. So the hull is obviously very important. 
Now the range upgrade on the other ways, on the other hand isn't really that important because we'll be using an upgrade that increases our range by 16% but the most important thing here is without a doubt the propulsion your default speed is so painfully slow upgrading the propulsion first is in my opinion a priority once you have the propulsion you can get the hull and once you have the hull you can get the range you don't need the range first because you'll be using this upgrade uh, consumable wise i prefer premium damage control and premium repair party that's not a must have but it does give you one additional heal and reduced cooldown which is quite nice upgrade wise main armaments mod and artillery plotting room. This I consider a must have, especially with 0.5.9 putting you up against higher tiers quite often. Having this increased range is very important to be able to duke it out against higher tiers. And finally, damage control system one. And captain perks wise, basics of survivability. It's the bread and butter of every battleship captain. Expert marksman, once again, very straightforward. You want those two perks. Here I'm actually gotten both Vigilance and Superintendent instead of saving up and going for advanced firing training. That's mostly because I really love both of these tier 3 perks. But uh, getting AF saving, not taking one of these and saving up for AFT is certainly not a bad option because AFT is such a fantastic perk for the anti-air and of course the secondaries, but mostly for the anti-air on US uh, battleships. So ultimately going for advanced firing training sooner and perhaps after this even saving up either for concealment expert or potentially getting manual AA which is also fantastic especially on higher tiers for example the T8 uh, the North Carolina becomes an anti-air fortress if you get both manual AA and AFT but ultimately th those are kind of down to flavor anyway that was my New York commentary I hope you guys enjoyed it